In terms of the 4PF model, there's two requirements here. Firstly, students need to be able to categorise risk factors into the appropriate P, predisposing, precipitating, perpetuating or protective. And likewise, using a biopsychosocial approach, come up with biological, psychological and social examples under each category, which I'm about to go through. Now, I will go through some of these individual examples in future YouTubes, but for now, I'm aiming to be brief. So in terms of predisposing factors, we're talking about pre-existing conditions that increase the susceptibility to the development of a mental condition, genetics being an obvious one. In terms of personality traits, such as poor self-efficacy, which reflects a person with a lack of control over their behaviour and their social environment, again, can predispose them to a variety of mental conditions. A disorganised attachment as a result of the inability to form a secure attachment during childhood can manifest itself in terms of social isolation and detachment from the emotions, again, predisposes that individual to a variety of mental conditions later on in life. Precipitating factors relate to now. So they, these can ha immediately contribute to the occurrence of a mental condition such as drug taking, poor sleep, which we learned about in the previous area study in Unit 4, which plays a key role in your emotional and psychological restoration. Uh, stress, so if there's, if there's a chronic stress response that's triggering uh, excessive activation of the fight-flight response, which results in high levels of, of stress hormones lingering in the bloodstream, this can precipitate a variety of mental conditions, particularly anxiety disorders and certainly a loss of significant relationship. Perpetuate means to continue. So these are factors that extend the duration or inhibit the recovery from a mental condition. So in terms of substance abuse, that's going to potentially negate the effects of pharmaceutical products designed to treat a mental condition. Some people respond better to, to medication than others. So at times we might have a poor response due to metabolism. Age can influence it. Gender, likewise, poor neurotransmitter receptiveness to certain types of psychotropic medications. In terms of rumination, repeatedly thinking about the, the negatives, jumping to conclusions, um, irrational thought processes can certainly play a role in inhibiting the recovery from psychosis, for instance. And stigma which is preventing people from seeking treatment because they don't want to be labelled or treated differently in their environment. Now, protective factors, these are the mechanisms that can be employed to prevent the occurrence or reoccurrence of a mental condition. So these can negate all these predisposing, precipitating and perpetuating factors, um, good diet and good sleep, maintaining fitness so we can flush out that excess stress um, hormones that have been triggered from the stress response, um, minimising your, your stimulant and depressant use, etc. Utilising CBT strategies by identifying your negative thought processes and trying to modify those with more adaptive thought processes, um, high resilience in terms of the ability to adapt to new situations, and certainly support from family, friends, and um, any mentors, etc. that are in your life.